Good afternoon all, it's postbag and they're all grey again, so it seems that the days of the yellow envelope are over. Right, let's open this uh, big wide flat one, see what's in here. It's uh, prototyping PCBs. Wow, they're quite big and uh, they're kind of joined together. Let's take a look inside this bag. So these are prototyping boards for dual inline ICs. Uh, if I do that, you can't see what's going on other than they're fully drilled. Actually, they're not fully drilled. There are a few holes missing. And I thought at first, well, maybe that's intentional, but it's really not because if you, well, if you look at these two, there are holes missing in the same places on both of them. But then on other ones, there aren't holes missing. So I think they've been fairly slapdash about holes that didn't get drilled. So they're very cheap. Look, there's lots of holes missing there. That's really amazing. They're very cheap. Uh, and you might have to do a bit of your own, uh, your own hole drilling. Uh, what else? The size is 8.5 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And uh, you can get a lot of chips on there. You've got two... Uh, where well, you can use them as power lines running down between the chips. The chips would sit across these two power lines and onto these um, these short four hole strips. Uh, so yes, you could use these as five volts and zero volts, or if these are op amps, you could possibly use them as plus and minus, or plus volts and uh, 12 volts and minus 12 volts or something like that. And then you'd have to run a separate ground wire through and around somehow. Yes, these are very cheap. I can't remember how cheap they are. Let's have a quick look. So they're uh, $7.79 for 10 pieces of this DIY prototype paper PCB. This is um, SRBP, uh, something resin bonded paper, I think it is. Universal matrix circuit board, 8.5 by 20 centimeters. Now these came from Heaven Stores. Uh, yes, yeah, $7.79 and free shipping. Now I thought for a moment these single ones had been singled out because they're the ones with the uh, holes, the drilled holes missing on them. But no, it doesn't seem that they are because these have holes missing as well. Uh, yeah, there's one up there. Uh, there's two there. There's one there on the power line. So it looks like they're just really badly manufactured. But they'll still work. And I mean, if there's a hole there which you... There's a few missing over there, but if you absolutely need, oh, what's that? Oh, there's a bit of um, where the track has been sort of etched away, eaten away more than it should have been. Yeah, so they're not by any means perfect, but um, for knocking up a circuit with lots of chips, and I'll lay some chips onto this just to see what it looks like. Um, yeah, I think these are fine. So you do something like this, allow a bit of spacing to uh, perhaps put some uh, decoupling capacitors between the chips. So what could you get? About seven that way. And you've got, um, well, of course, if you're using this row, you can't use this row. So actually slightly awkward that. Uh, yeah, so you can really only get two rows of chips on here. If this had been slightly wider and had another pair of these power lines you could have got three, I suppose. I mean, you can't put a chip there because then all the pins on that top connect to all the pins on this bottom. So it's, you've got to space them two rows apart. Uh, yeah, it's not ideal, is it? Right, here's another big square one and it's quite well padded, it would seem. Let's uh, cut into what I hope is padding. And uh, oh, I'm gonna have to open this separately. Right, just open this, and there's actually a little yellow envelope inside here, so what's in there? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, I just cut over some wires. Oh, it's these um, little prototyping wires with the uh, single pin. Uh, different colours, different lengths. Okay, so that's everything in there. Let's open this bit. And uh, inside the uh, big package is this. It's uh, lots and lots of breadboard. Four of these, uh, well, they just say breadboard up there. And at the bottom, they say SYB118, which is interesting because I've got some SYB118 
120s. So uh, be interesting to see how they're different. And up here, there's a couple of what look like speaker terminals, spring-loaded speaker terminals. Let's get this bag off, actually. So yeah, this is a big uh, breadboard with four of these SYB118s. Now they have, uh, ooh, looks like five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty-nine rows. Is it? That's a bit strange. Yes, I think it is fifty-nine rows. Okay, fifty-nine rows. Uh, there's also a two-row uh, power distribution strip up here. It looks like uh, these spring-loaded contacts, speaker style. The board it's sat on is really thick. I don't think it's fiberglass because it doesn't scratch when I rub my knife over it. It's just a solid plastic, but it's quite, well, solid. Um, so you could hook up your power supplies to uh, these solder points here, which if I can get that, yes, you can see that it's just a standard tag with a hole in it. So you could wire that to your power supplies and then use these wires uh, in, trapped in there and poked into the uh, SYB118. Now this SYB118 thing interests me because as I say, I've got some SYB120s and there was an issue with the 120s. So yes, I bought four of these uh, SYB120s. You can see uh, the name there. And I mounted them on this sort of piece of wood with this panel on the front. This is part of my tele tennis uh, project, which doesn't get an airing very often. But um, the problem with this was that there were breaks in these power lines. They're not continuous. They're broken in two places there where there's a red dot and there where there's a red dot. And I wasn't really sure what was going on. So I just put wire links in a lot of the uh, link points, but it is only broken in two places and it seems completely intentional. Uh, Big Clive, it was that uh, sort of resolved this and worked out that there were four breaks in these four locations. So the question is, do they have the breaks in these long strips on the SYB118? Well, there's only one way to find out. Really strange how these are tied with sort of a plastic bit of strap, not just an elastic band, they're actually sort of tied by hand, almost quite traditional looking. Right, um, let's get a DVM on this in continuity mode and check out whether these lines are continuous. Right, continuity mode. Yep. So let's try them from one end right to the other end. And no, there's no continuity there. Let's see where it breaks. Well, of course, it'll break here, I suppose. So there's continuity there. Am I on camera? No, not quite. And there's no continuity there. So here, once again, there is a break in the line. Let's do this on the next one up. Got continuity for those first three uh, sections and then it breaks for this next section. Continuity right across those three. Does it break there? No, ah, so continuity across those four then. Yes, but not onto these three at this end. Continuity along those three, but there's a break at that point. If I can get that in, I can't, I have to go to that one. Yeah, so it's broken at that point. So these are the same. I'm going to have to mark these with a red dot because these power strips have breaks uh, after the first three, then after, well, seven, um, and there are three sections connected together. Weird why they would do that. So what I've done is I've marked all the points where there is a lack of continuity on the power strip with a little red dot to remind myself here and here, to remind myself that uh, there are breaks here and that you have to put a little uh, wire jumper hoop over there uh, to get a continuous, uh, well, VCC or ground or whatever you're using this for. It's very strange. It's odd that they're not marked. It's almost as though um, they couldn't manufacture, or it was expensive to manufacture long continuous strips, so they just put in shorter strips. Very strange, and it can catch you out. It caught me out. Now, I didn't get the best deal on this. I got caught out because I saw this $9.98 and I hit buy it now and commit to buy. And then I later spotted $7.99 in postage. So I certainly wouldn't recommend uh, going for this one. Who was this from? This was from Way In House. Uh, I mean, they're probably a perfectly good seller, but there are cheaper offers for this item elsewhere. It's described as an SYB500 
uh, not quite sure why, because it's got SYB 118 strips on it. Uh, oh, four in one, 700 tie point PCB solderless breadboard. Plus you get 65 pieces of the jumper wire cables. So I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with this, but probably use it for uh, prototyping up sections of either the vocoder and or the uh, tele tennis machine. Now, I think this one is my new bench power supply. People have been saying for ages that I should get myself a bench power supply. So I have. Yes, it is. Look, this is the uh, positive section of my bench power supply and this is going to be the negative section. So yeah, uh, stuffed full of, oh, what is it? 10, so 20 inner loop nickel metal hydrides. This will generate, uh, well, it's 10 times 1.2. So yeah, 12 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts. New bench power supply, excellent. So these are one pieces new 10 times AA mobile battery clip holder case with wire leads. I didn't want the ones with the little um, battery clip terminal clip things. I just wanted wire leads on these so that I can put my own connectors on them. Uh, super cheapy, cheap, cheap. I bought two of these. They're $1.45 free shipping. So I spent about $3 and these came from Heaven Stores. Now, is this what I think it is? What I hope it is? I'm pretty sure it is because it says three times module on it. And the modules are these. So these are three more of these little, um, now what are they, DDS synthesizer or they're actually a programmable waveform generator uh, module based on the analog devices AD9833. And these are going to be for my uh, penny organ or chord organ. And uh, there's one on there at the moment. By adding three more, I can turn it into a four note polyphonic machine. So these are the AD9833 programmable microprocessor sine square wave DDS signal generator module. Um, they also do triangle wave, of course, that's not to be forgotten. Uh, these are $5.80 each, free shipping. Now these only seem to come from one eBay seller, this this uh, format anyway, smooth dealer. So here's the penny organ with its uh, single oscillator currently in uh, triangle wave mode, I think because sine wave resonated with these nasty cheap uh, speakers. Uh, so that's got uh, one voice, if you like to call it that, it's monophonic. When it gets these uh, three new oscillators, I'm gonna have to work out some sort of distribution for uh, what is it? Um, S clock and data. So just a little piece of variable with multiple uh, headers on it. So I can distribute that to the four uh, boards. And then I have to put a little analog mixer on the back, just four resistors probably. And uh, then you'll be able to play chords. Uh, at the moment it's only one note polyphonic. And you can't play chords on it, but when it's got uh, all four of these boards, you'll be able to play chords. And then I want to do all sorts of interesting things. I want to see how accurate the crystal is on these things. And therefore, if I play the same note on all four, um, will it be exactly the same frequency or will there be an ever so slight phasing effect? Uh, of course, the, the oscillations themselves will be out of phase because they all have their own crystal. So there's no phase lock between the, uh, the four notes. Then I want to take them ever so slightly um, off frequency and see what um, uh, four of the same notes sounds like, but ever so slightly detuned. Uh, there's all sorts of things I want to do. I want to compare just intonation with um, equal temperament and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be great fun. Uh, I've put the Norwegian Krona here. So these are going to be four select lines. They'll go into the first four um, pins of the touch switch board. The remaining eight go to these um, these eight uh, buttons here. Well, these Japanese 50 yen coins. Now, when I last did a video on this, someone said, why didn't you play a tune, uh, Do, Re, Mi, on it? Uh, well, this is why. Because it's awful. 
So what's this thing for? Well, it's going to be, I don't know, a device in its own right for comparing uh, the just intonation and equal temperament stuff and kind of going through some maths for all that stuff, which I think will be a lot of fun. But also, whoops, I think uh, I'm going to use it for um, an excitation source for the vocoder. The vocoder has its two oscillators built in, um, but this, of course, will have four oscillators. So this should make a, a really nice uh, na noise source or sound source for the vocoder. So the two projects will kind of come together. And these are today's postbag items. Cheerio.